Hello and welcome to Tech with Heart. I am your host, Michelle Calloway. Tech with Heart's all about empowering entrepreneurs to embrace technologies, systems, and strategies that will help them to stay competitive and relevant in today's digital business landscape. In today's topic, it may not be the sexiest of topics, but it is something that I see business owners struggling with all the time, and that is file structuring. What are good practices for file structuring for small businesses? So that's what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to get right on into it. So the first thing that we need to address when it comes to file naming is indeed that, putting a name to a file. Whether you are downloading a document from the internet or whether you are creating a document and then saving it somewhere within your internal organizational systems, you need to understand the benefits of file naming and how important it is. So let's just say you're working on tax documentation, correct? When you are creating your tax documentation and you're saving them to a place where you can go and then send them all to your CPA or whoever is helping you do your taxes, you want to be somewhat organized with these files. So when you are saving something from any particular bank, rather than just saving it the way it downloads from those online platforms, like it always comes in with some sort of really random like number structure or export, blah, blah, blah. You might want to go ahead and just take a few seconds to click on that file name within your uh, Windows infrastructure, whether you're on Mac or PC, and title it the name of the bank and then the month or the year of the, the information that's within that document. Go ahead and take that time to do that because if you don't, you're going to end up regretting it later when you try to go recover that file and you can't remember what you, where it is, what it's titled or whatnot. So that is number one important reason to name your files. The other one is I'm gonna give you a scenario. If you are a small business owner and you are hoping to get more media attention, part of your media kit that you will want to send to whomever is going to position you as an authority on their stage they're going to want headshots, they're going to want your bio, and they're going to want anything else that you've ever done that's media related for credibility piece. So when you send them your media kit, whether it's packaged in a zip file or whether it's just some loose files, the last thing you want your bio file name to say is bio 2023. And the reason why that's not a good file name is because they're going to receive that and it's going to be so generic and it's going to have absolutely no connotation to you in the file name. So what I recommend you do is to go ahead and add either your first initial and last name and then do bio 2023 so that you, you can tell it's the most up-to-date bio that you have and save that bio file with your name in the file name. And the same goes for your headshot there's going to be different headshots that you're going to have. And some of them are going to be like with a knocked out or a clipped out background. So it's kind of going to be transparent and you can title that your first initial and last name. And then perhaps what you're wearing or the, the type of pose, you know, like a side profile or whatnot, you want to give yourself hints in the file name, but make sure your name is associated with those headshots that you're going to send out because a media representative that receives headshot one, they have absolutely no idea unless they click on it or they see a thumbnail view of what that picture contains. And also they probably are getting a lot of media headshots sent to them. And so if your name's not on there, how are they gonna know you, right? Because they've never met you yet. They're getting ready to have you on their stage. So please take the time to file uh, create a file name for all of your files that make sense to you and don't think, oh, I'll do that in a minute. You know, I'll just download a bunch of things and I'll do that in a minute. You want to do that while the thought is in your head, because as many small business owners, we're wearing so many hats you, and you need to take it, 
action when you have the thought and then you will you'll reward yourself later for being able to just do a quick search through your file structures and be able to pull up anything that you're looking for because of the way that you've been trained to to file to name your files so that's my tip number one in file structuring for small business owners the second thing is actually the structuring or the organization of said files we talked a little bit about taxes so let's go back to that Let's just say you download a bunch of documents from your bank and then you've got like your um, different, uh, what do you call it, uh, properties or your different um, utilities and you download all of them. Okay, so you download them. Right now they're going to be sitting in your downloads folder. So what you should probably do is create a folder inside of your in infrastructure, whether it be um, on your computer or on a server somewhere or on a cloud like Dropbox or Google Docs or OneDrive or, you know, <laughs> there's so many different cloud services. So what you want to do is go ahead and create a folder that's unique to that particular year. And then within that folder, you may also need to separate your bank statements or mortgage statements or rental receipts or whatnot um, separately from all of your utility bills. So you might want to start creating folders within folders to organize your content, your data a little bit better. So that can be simple, like within 2023 folder, you're going to want to have utilities and then all your utilities can go in there. Or even within that utilities folder, you can get a little bit more narrow and say cell phone or you know, power, water, you know, et cetera. And so that it's not just all a bunch of loose files in there. It really depends on you and how much volume of data. Organizing your data in ways that it's hierarchical and it makes sense is super, super brilliant because again, you're going to be able to just go there in a minute's notice and you're going to save a ton of time by not searching and searching and searching, searching and searching and searching for the data that you need because you didn't either name it properly or you didn't place it in the proper location. So those are some tips on structuring. Being able to do business online is crucial for survival, especially during times of social distancing. So how do you survive and thrive in the sea of digital noise? It's a lot like fishing. You need to know who your perfect customer is so that you could use the right kind of lure to attract them. We help you catch your perfect customer and retain them for future sales through highly converting websites, influencer mobile apps, getting you featured in the news and on TV. Hi, my name is Jerry Bowden, U.S. Army veteran and president of Revealio Software Solutions. Our goal is to help you rise above the competition, be seen as an expert authority in your industry, and embrace technology to stay competitive for long-term success. It's more affordable than you may think. So reach out to us at Revealio.com and together we will make your business come alive. And then the third one is talking about what types of files to save things as. Earlier, we spoke about a media kit. And now when you create a, or you send out a headshot, if you are going to send a headshot that has a transparent background, like you see some people that, that they're all clipped out and they have zero background, so that means that they can be placed on a graphic that has its own background. And then you just kind of represent yourself as if you're there on that background with no white box behind you or no green box behind you or uh, any textured background that you bring in with that photo. Those type of clipped images should be saved as .pngs with a transparent background. And if you don't know how to save it that way, then that's where maybe you might need to either go into Canva or you may need to hire a graphic designer or a virtual assistant that's a graphic designer that can help you save that file properly so that when you send it out to a media entity, it does indeed come across with a transparent background. Only PNGs um, are the, those are the best types of files to send out with transparency in the background. Otherwise, when you are sending anything to a company to represent you or your business, and it's going to be on their website or it's going to be on their print materials, then a JPG is sufficient. 
but you want to make sure that it's not a super, super low resolution JPG, but JPGs are the smallest file types for web, for instance. PNGs can be a little bit larger, to tell you the truth. Um, so you want to make sure that it is probably above 300K for, uh, for web and or print. Anything higher than 300K K kilobytes is probably going to represent and print out nicely, but um, don't go any smaller than that, especially for print. 300 dots per inch is what's recommended as a minimum for print. Print is a completely different beast than, than the websites. Um, the way that our eyes depict the data uh, through pixels that we see through the internet is much different than when ink is being placed on print paper through uh, any kind of printed document. So it's good to know the difference. Um, ask your printer what your minimum requirements are if you want to send images or documents to them to print out. And um, that's where it's also good to know the difference between RGB, which is based on web information, the way that light goes through the pixels on the display, whether it be mobile or desktop, is very different than CMYK, which is what printers need information to be sent to them in because that's how they display color on their printed with through their printing devices. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a little confusing if this is not your area of expertise, but you can learn a lot about this type of thing by simply Googling or again, reaching out to your printer to identify what it is and how, how you should be sending the file structures to them. So hopefully this has been beneficial. So um, the only other thing I was going to say is that if you struggle a little bit with um, figuring out how to be best organized, you can actually ask artificial intelligence like ChatGPT, ask them, ask it to help you figure out what is a good filing structure or organizing your documents or go to Google and just research some best practices there. Hopefully what I've been sharing with you today is very helpful. And all I wanna do is just elevate you um, to be more efficient to be more proactive. And then of course, I really want to encourage you to get more media exposure. So that's why that media kit is so important. So if you are a small business owner and you would like to learn more about you know, growing your business online, I really encourage you to go check us out. We are techwithheartnetwork.com. We are a nonprofit organization. We grow alongside one another. Whether you are super tech savvy or whether you are just not, we really simplify technology concepts and we bring on experts to bring you enlightenment around their area of expertise so that you can stay competitive and relevant in your industry in a rapidly changing digital era. So go to techwithheartnetwork.com, join our community, and if you are an expert and you would like to be introduced to the community and interviewed as an expert in your niche, please reach out to us at techwithheartnetwork.com and submit your information to us to get positioned on our stage. We'd love to have you. And we'd love to also collaborate with you on um, having more events, more enlightenment events for our small business community. So again, go to techwithheartnetwork.com. And if you'd love to volunteer or help our organization grow, we also have a student mentoring and apprenticeship program for minorities and underserved students. So we'd love to have more mentors join our forces so that we can impact more young minds to really grow and experience practical work experience by supporting our small entrepreneurial audience. So here's to your success. Your story needs to be seen and heard, and your brand needs to be revealed. Revealio elevates purpose-driven businesses into the spotlight through video storytelling, augmented reality video marketing, and professional website design. Get discovered online or in the news. Be featured in national magazines or host your own TV, podcast, or live radio show. Together, we make your brand come alive. All it takes is Revealio. Visit Revealio.com to get started today. Minority and service-disabled veteran-owned.